nothing. That's probably not how you remember the finale of the movie Dodgeball, because those are actually the closing moments of the alternate ending found on the DVD. And according to commentary by the director, that depressing resolution, where the average Joes abruptly lose in the end, is actually the original ending of the film. But comedy can sometimes be a lot like a game of dodgeball, and if you don't pay attention, it can be easy to get caught off guard. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Oh. So while we dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge, why not take a moment to subscribe to the Nerdstalgic channel? Written and directed by first-time filmmaker Ross and Marshall Thurber, Dodgeball, a true underdog story, was a satire of sports underdog movies like Hoosiers. The underdog in this case is Average Joe's Gym, a no-frills health club frequented by misfits and run by a cool, quippy guy named Peter LaFleur, played by Vince Vaughn. But Peter defaults on his mortgage, leaving himself exposed to a takeover by his rival, the corporate chain Globo Gym, run by the arrogant and spiteful White Goodman, played by Ben Stiller. Because here at Globo Gym, we're better than you, and we know it. To get the money to save average Joes, Peter and his gym's oddball members enter themselves in a Las Vegas dodgeball tournament. Along the way, Peter falls for a beautiful lawyer, played by Ben Stiller's real wife, Christine Taylor, and becomes something of a reluctant leader to his team. All roads lead to a dodgeball showdown between average Joes and Globo Jim. Thumbs up, average Joes can play. Thank you, Chuck Norris. Thank you, Peter. The Joes put up a good fight, but Globo Jim wins and starts to celebrate. Until a last second penalty on White suddenly puts Peter back in the game for a one on one sudden death elimination. Peter wins, and in a complete reversal of fortune, Average Joes wins the tournament. Out of nowhere, Peter reveals that he had bet on Average Joes to win, and netted millions of dollars that he used to buy a controlling interest in Globo Jim which had become the owner of Average Joe's when Peter sold it while at a low point earlier in the film. The movie ends with a triumphant commercial for Average Joe's and a credit sequence that shows a slobbish, bitter, and obese white. F Chuck Norris. The movie was a massive hit and quickly made its way to DVD. But when that DVD dropped, there was a surprise waiting for fans, an alternate ending. In this version, the movie cuts to black and rolls credits right after the average Joes are eliminated. Even more shocking was that the clip was accompanied by an optional director's commentary on which Thurber explained that this more artistic ending was the one preferred by himself, Stiller, and Vaughn. But test audiences didn't support it, so the studio ordered reshoots to create the happy resolution seen in the theatrical release. According to Thurber, he was so incensed he walked off the film, only to be coaxed back by the producers and stars. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. It was a stunning revelation, but for many fans of the film, it did seem to explain a few things. For example, some of the developments after the sudden death rematch. Like Peter's revelation, he bet on the team to win before the final match didn't exactly make sense given the film's continuity. Then there was the fact the movie seemed to be mocking the incredible string of luck it took for average Joes to win. The treasure chest their prize money is delivered in is even conspicuously labeled Deus Ex Machina. Ah, that's a real brilliant plan. Too bad it doesn't make any sense. By the early aughts, DVDs were automatically expected to include special features like commentary tracks, deleted scenes, and alternate endings. Now, one thing we know for a fact is that the Dodgeball crew decided to poke some fun at those DVD conventions through the extra content they produced. We know this because if you play the commentary track with Stiller, Vaughn, and Thurber, you'll hear Vaughn getting drunk and eating chips while talking over Thurber. I'm not drinking it. Hey, we're not working. I'm not you know drinking it. I mean? We're just talking. This is, uh, at one o'clock in the afternoon, I'm not drinking. Stiller, meanwhile, arrives late and sits down to eat biscotti while wearing his car is going to be stolen. Can you have somebody go and check That's on my car every like 15, 20 minutes? I'm not, I know and it sounds it's weird, uh, just because uh, I'm a little paranoid. In the, in the striped shirt. Sure thing, we'll send somebody out there. The three men begin to snipe at each other while also being jerks to the sound men. My biggest problem with the training sequence was that the director had no idea how to direct them. After 40 minutes of talking about pretty much anything but the film, the three all abruptly depart. Okay. You know. Take it easy. No, no, we need you to stay then. No. What are we gonna do? And the sound men opt to play the commentary from a different movie in the hope no one will notice the difference. This is Peter Farrelly and Bobby Farrelly, and we're gonna walk you through the movie. It's all arguably as funny as the movie itself, and despite being played totally straight faced, it's obviously staged. So the idea that there are other gag bonus features isn't far fetched at all. Looking for some Easter eggs? Cool. I guess you couldn't get a date tonight. 
Then there is the convenient fact that the so-called original ending doesn't contain any significant new footage, just a few extra sounds of Globo Jim celebrating their victory. Even if the creative team wanted a downer ending, is this how they would do it? Leaving every other plot thread unresolved and without any additional scenes of Peter and his crew dealing with or being affected by the loss. And then there's Thurber's assertion that the studio sent them back for a day of reshoots. The allegedly new footage, over 10 minutes worth, includes elaborate blocking for the entire cast, dozens of new camera setups, stunts, wire work, an elaborate makeup job for Stiller, and the entire Average Joe's commercial that closes the movie. Even people with a passing familiarity with how movies are made will recognize that it's pretty much impossible that much could have been accomplished in a single day shoot. But what really proves the alternate ending is a gag is the hidden director's commentary that you can only find by following instructions relayed via a clip of Ben Stiller in his white Goodman fat suit. Every time I snap my fingers in the movie, hit enter. Then you get your precious Easter egg. Have fun in Nerdville! Again, confirming the team intended to satirize the DVD medium itself. Content-wise, the hidden director's commentary is completely different from the others. It's a genuinely insightful, real-life director's commentary. And contrary to the image of the indignant first-time director who stormed off his movie, this time, Thurber specifically talks about not getting precious about one's ideas and the importance of collaboration. That was actually William Shatner's idea, struggling with the, uh, the scepter. He's like, I think you're missing a little bit of funny business here. I think we could struggle with it. And as soon as I saw him do it, I thought it was, I thought it was great. And we kept it in. When it gets to the crucial scene where the average Joes are eliminated, the director specifically says, And this is where the, you know, we, we hope the audience feels like the movie's over and average Joes is lost. Um, so we try to extend it as far as we can before we we go back to the good ending. It's a comment which seems to indicate that the theatrical ending was always the intended ending, since that sequence would have had to been captured before the alleged reshoots. Interestingly, Thurber does specifically mention that the clip of Stiller in the closing credits was the result of a reshoot. And while this is purely speculative, it is at least plausible that the purpose of that reshoot was to capture the footage of Stiller used in the Easter egg instructions on the DVD, which appears to have been shot at the same time. It is over between us, Kate. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody! So Dodgeball never really intended to deliver the subversive gut punch many have come to believe the creators originally wanted, and its subtitle was likely only ever meant to evolve the marketing of the movies Dodgeball was sending up. There's an arguably depressing moral here about how easily a joke got mixed up with the truth, and the importance of media literacy, but instead, we're just going to say, when you're dealing with jokesters, please folks. Be careful about what you take too seriously. So what do you think? Do you agree the alternate ending was a joke? Let us know down in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely find others you like if you check out the rest of the channel. As always, thank you for subscribing to Nerdstalgic.